This shot show began when Naoya confessed his love to Saki Saki, his childhood friend. Prepared for rejection, it comes as a surprise when my man ends up scoring that chick, proclaiming himself as the happiest man alive. One day, as classes finish for the day, Saki begins to head off to her club with a friend and playfully tells Naoya to not cheat on her. Hearing this, Naoya bursts into a crazed loving frenzy. Tightly embracing Saki, he promises to love her even more so that she will never have to worry about such a thing. Although the girl is weirded out by his complete sincerity, Naoya insists that he can't help himself. After all, Naoya has been confessing to her once a month since they were in first grade and only got his feelings accepted in high school. In the words of a great super hot fire, You're a victim! Coming around to his overwhelming love, Saki proclaims, Bring it on, heading off to her club at last. Later, Naoya stands atop the school roof. Suddenly, a first year named Minase Nagisa arrives and confesses her feelings for him having worked on herself for the past three months to be in her best condition for this confession. She is a woman of focus, commitment, and sheer freaking will. The upright girl has even practiced cooking and prepared a delicious meal for Naya to try, which brings my man to tears. Despite all of Nagisa's attractiveness, the boy informs her that they can't go out as he already has a girlfriend. However, she refuses to give up. Captivated by Nagisa's persistence and cuteness, Naoya proposes the outrageous idea of convincing Saki to accept Nagisa as a second girlfriend. Bloods practicing monogamy in this economy? The girl accepts, and the two arrive before Saki, who instantly starts fawning over Nagisa's cuteness and wants to hang out. As the day ends, Saki, charmed by Nagisa's qualities, ends up feeling like she wants to date her. At this moment, Naoya openly expresses his desire to date both of them, honestly, and out in the open. Of course, such a request makes Saki punch him in the face. However, Naoya's sincerity and Nagisa's irresistible charm eventually makes her break. Despite still having reservations, Saki grants them permission for their unique arrangement. In the end, the trio decides to live together since Naoya currently lives alone. On their first night together, Saki eats a delicious dinner and then gets in the bath. While she relaxes, Nagisa enters the bathroom and insists that they do it together since she wants to talk to her. Seeing the second girlfriend's amazing physical attributes, Saki feels a tad bit jealous. Right then, Nagisa tells her to go ahead and sleep with Naoya first tonight. This makes Saki admit that their relationship hasn't progressed to a sexual level, culminating in an awkward conversation where Naoya suggests the idea of a threesome. <laughs> Dudes moving three steps ahead. Although she labels the boy a pervert for this suggestion, yet Saki can't help but be charmed by Nagisa's sexy time appeal. Promising to postpone any intimate encounters until they're all closer to each other, Naoya starts heading off. Of course, this also means that he won't be having any sexy time with them one-on-one -on -one either, much to Saki's disappointment, even though she denies it. Standing in the laundry room, Saki laments that her rival girlfriend has such an attractive and irresistible charm. She wonders if Nagisa is sick of Naoya after finding out what a freak he is. However, the weird girl wouldn't mind even a threesome if it's something Naoya wants. Left wanting Nagisa to become her girlfriend, Saki understands that she is in the losing position here. Things only get worse when Naoya sets up three adjacent futons for their first night, suggesting that everyone sleep together. Later, pretending to have fallen asleep, Saki sees Nagisa move into Naoya's futon to talk, causing her to think that they are doing naughty things. Having her suspicions be dumbfounded, Saki moves into Naoya's futon as well. Sometime after, Nagisa prepares lunch food for the three of them. Seeing Naoya and Saki still sleeping with their phones beside them, the girl wonders if she can find out chunks of their personal information from them. Not emotionally prepared to spy on Naoya's phone quite yet, Nagisa goes through Saki's phone instead, only to find that almost all of her searches are about sexy time stuff. However, she also sees Saki saying good things about her on her private Quitter account. Right then, Naoya wakes up, followed by Saki. As Nagisa is about to confess to her snooping, the boy takes the blame. Flustered that all her naughty searches have been exposed, Saki punches the ever-living crap out of poor Naoya. Domestic violence for the win. For legal reasons, this is a joke. In the morning, Naoya and Saki find out that Nagisa is in the same class as them, but forgot to attend school while preparing for her confession. Deeming this to be unacceptable, Naoya insists that they spend all day studying together to catch her up. Soon, it becomes clear that Nagisa is bad at math. Despite spending over half an hour in the bathroom as an excuse to cheat, she gets the answers wrong anyway. Girl would survive a long time in a zombie apocalypse with this brain, no? Of course, being the earnest guy that he is, Naoya vows to help her through it no matter how long it takes. Afterwards, the trio is about to head off to school, when Saki insists that no one can know about their weird relationship. Though upon seeing that no one is talking to Nagisa in class, Naoya attempts to reveal everything, only for Saki to violently stop him. On the rooftop, she reveals being worried about people thinking that Naoya doesn't care about her. Right then, Nagisa arrives and agrees to interact only at home. However, her puppy-like cuteness and innocence charm Saki yet again. In the end, she decides that they can interact in secret at school instead. 
Getting caught on the forbidden school roof, the three lovebirds rush to find a place to have lunch together, eventually deciding on the gym storage. Since the door is locked, the trio enters through an open window. They then rearrange the furniture in order to hide if someone barges in. As this relationship started due to his selfishness, Naoya vows to work hard to deal with any and all problems that arise from now on. A few days later, while having lunch together, Saki hears about the lengths that Naoya and Nagasa are willing to go for the relationship to succeed. Trying to think about what she brings to the table, Saki realizes that she has been useless all this time compared to Nagisa and Naoya. She really out here cosplaying Sakura, huh? The girl starts worrying that Naoya will soon choose Nagisa over her. Determined to do something for Naoya to make him happy, Saki goes to him to ask what he needs. However, this only ends up in the boy getting cake and tea for her instead. Trying to get her act together, Saki attempts cooking. Of course, she forgets about it for hours on end and burns the curry. Overcome with worries of being a bad girlfriend, Saki becomes desperate to impress Naoya, sneaking into his room with the intention of engaging in naughty activity, though he rejects her. This leaves Saki in an even worse mental condition, thinking that Naoya prefers Nagasa because of her larger breasts. I mean, can you really blame the guy if he did though? Turning into a crying mess, Saki returns to her parents' house in the middle of the night, which is conveniently located right next door. Despite it being a chance for Nagisa to have some alone time with Naoya, she gets worried upon hearing that he doesn't plan on resting or sleeping until he makes up with Saki, exhausting himself over three sleepless days. Naoya tries different methods to apologize to Saki. However, she rejects his apologies every single time. Seeing the boy in such a state, Nagisa feels remorseful that he is the only one trying to fix their relationship and decides to intervene. Calling out for Saki, she sneakily grabs Naoya's hand and puts it on her breast. Girl thinks she's slick. You definitely wanted to do that already, mom. This triggers the former's jealousy, who instantly returns to the house in a furious state. With this, Nagisa announces that the two can talk now, wishing Naoya good luck. Man, I want Naoya's riz. And if you do too, then subscribe to the channel. Getting pushed by Nagisa and Naoya, Saki acknowledges that she feels inferior compared to the former. She feels frustrated that Naoya does everything for her, without expecting anything in return from her at all. Surprisingly, Nagisa chimes in to agree with Saki, remarking that Naoya takes on too much responsibility. After a heartfelt exchange, the trio makes up, with Saki and Nagisa proclaiming each other as rivals. After Saki returns home, Naoya collapses from his exhaustion accumulated over the three long days. Meanwhile, the two girls have dinner and talk about how they can become friends. Saki suggests gaming, discovering that Nagisa has spent over a thousand hours in her favorite game as well. However, she soon realizes that Nagisa is very bad at the game despite such a long playtime. Finally finding something that she excels at, Saki gets a huge boost in confidence, and so the duo spends the night playing together. Soon Naoya wakes up and is glad to see his two girlfriends having fun together. Ah, to be a spectator in my own harem. Saki and Nagisa decide to watch a voluptuous online game MeTuber named Mirika together. Right then, Naoya notices a school uniform in the background of the thumbnail, realizing that it's the same one as their school. Afterwards, Saki's friend, Shino, teases her for being attached at the hip with Naoya all the time. Later, while the three lovebirds enjoy their lunch in the gym storage room, Nagisa brings up how Mirika has changed the thumbnail on her video to hide the school uniform. Saki calls the MeTuber a loser, remarking that Mirika should have been careful like them if she had something to hide. Turns out, Saki herself has forgotten to lock the window to their hiding place. She really received instant karma, piping hot and all. Using it, another girl climbs into the gym storage. Naoya panics, unintentionally revealing that he is in a two-timing relationship. Amused, the stranger begins teasing them about their secret until Nagisa recognizes her as Mirika. This causes Mirika to also panic, blurting out her secret as well. With each person now harboring secrets that they wish to keep hidden, they all agree to maintain silence. Recognizing that they are genuinely good people despite being a bunch of weirdos, Mirika expresses her desire to join them as Naoya's third girlfriend. Hearing Mirika's outrageous demand, Saki and Nagisa conclude that she is only interested in having Naoya as a boyfriend in order to protect her against potential stalkers amongst her fans. At the same time, the boy acknowledges Marika's cuteness, but rejects her advances, recognizing that her motives are shallow and self-centered. My guy has a backbone, who could have thought? Having never experienced rejection before, she tries to entice Naoya by her G-cup milkers. Of course, he would rather squeeze the milkers of a girl he likes, blood turning into a gigachad with each passing second. The trio then begins to leave, during which a slip of the tongue by Saki accidentally reveals that they live together. Hearing this, Mirika demands that she live with them to make Naoya see how great she is, offering to pay the rent and bills as well. However, the boy remains firm in his rejection, and Mirika runs off in tears. The following day, Mirika tracks the trio down and sets up a tent in their backyard, vowing to make Naoya fall for her. 
She buys expensive items and supplies to power her through the harsh outdoors, recording sexy exercise videos to earn the money needed for them. Mirika even finds a way to shower in the backyard, worrying Nagasa and Saki that her determination might enable her to stay in their backyard indefinitely. Deciding that they need to divert Naoya's attention from Mirika, the two girls attempt to seduce him, only to fail miserably. Regardless, Naoya assures them that he will spend more time with them and worry less about Mirika, all the while the latter continues to sleep in their backyard. Need this type of unbothered energy in my life. Mirika continues to live in Naoya's backyard, making him worry that he may eventually succumb to her advances due to being a weak-willed loser. At least he is self-aware, I guess. Albeit not wanting to do anything harsh at first, Saki and Nagisa decide to assist Naoya in getting rid of Mirika by donating her belongings to charity. However, the MeTuber catches them in the act and tries to disrupt the loading, getting held back by Naoya. Mirika screams out at the boy for being a groper, attempting to humiliate him in front of the bystanders. Still, Naoya stands his ground and refuses to let Mirika go, unbothered by the judgmental stares from the crowd. He even offers to fully back the amount for her belongings if she agrees to leave. Baffled, Mirika wonders why a two-timing good-for-nothing refuses to date her. Naoya explains that he couldn't choose between the two of them, so he will ensure that both Saki and Nagisa are truly happy to date him. This revelation makes Mirika get butterflies in her stomach, as she truly becomes infatuated with Naoya, refusing to leave his side to go home. Dude needs to give classes on his riz. Right then, Mirika's father appears on the scene and discovers what she has been up to, including her provocative MeTube videos. Revealing her real name to be Hoshizaki Rika, the girl's father confiscates her phone in an attempt to permanently shut down her MeTube account. However, Naoya intervenes. He praises the artistic talent and ingenuity that goes behind Rika's videos, as well as the effort she has invested in developing the Mirika persona. Seeing Naoya defend her, Mirika genuinely falls in love with him, making Nagisa and Saki panic. The girl then agrees to return home to contemplate her feelings, but only on the condition that her father allows her to keep her Mirika account. We love a strong independent queen here, Saki and Nagisa, on the other hand, worry what more complications and troubles Mirika's newfound love for Naoya may lead to. Talking with Nagisa, Saki doesn't know what to do with their Mirika predicament. She decides to head home for a bit, where her mother worries about Saki and Naoya not engaging in naughty activities, being unaware of Nagisa's existence. Through this conversation, Saki realizes that Naoya's rational nature and determination to treat his two girlfriends equally might mean that they will never have sexy time together. Blood is giving new meaning to the word Sigma right now. In an attempt to seduce him, Saki dresses up in a hot bunny girl outfit. However, Naoya remains adamant on adhering to their earlier promise of no naughty things. Enraged, Saki pushes the boy down to the ground and sits on him. Right then, her top starts coming off. In a panic to keep it on her, Naoya accidentally touches her breasts. Flustered, Saki punches him and starts running off, albeit a bit happy in knowing that she has aroused him. Seeing Saki in such good spirits the following day, Nagisa wonders if something happened last night. The girl's suspicions only get stronger when she discovers the bunny costume in the laundry, leading her to confront Naoya about it. The boy insists that nothing happened, leading Nagisa to believe that he has a fetish for cosplays. To even up the playing field, Nagisa dresses up as a sexy maid and follows through with the part, calling Naoya master and obeying his every command. Ayo, this making me feel some type of way. Although Naoya is thoroughly aroused, he still manages to keep it in his pants. During the night, Nagisa is all bubbly like Saki before, and she accidentally refers to Naoya as master in front of her. Fortunately for her, Saki brushes it off as a simple mishearing. Sometime later at school, Mirika attempts to speak with Naoya. Saki intervenes, while her friend Shino worries for her. A group gathers as well, wondering what's going on. Regardless, Naoya insists that he talk to Mirika alone and heads to the school roof with her. There, he apologizes to the girl for humiliating her mistakenly believing that she is still upset about his rejection. How is such a dense guy pulling so many girls? I kneel. Naoya then strips down to his underwear, offering Marika sweet revenge by taking embarrassing pictures of him and spreading them online. Though this idiotic apology only makes Marika wonder how Naoya can be so thoughtful and cool. Getting bombarded with compliments, she is pushed to almost confessing her love for him. However, Mirika just ends up expressing heartfelt gratitude to thanking Naoya for saving her MeTube account. Later, Mirika privately admits to herself that she is madly in love with Naoya. However, unbeknownst to her, her confession gets overheard by Saki. At school, Mirika clings all up onto Naoya, sparking questions about their relationship. Saki starts to feel jealous, telling the MeTuber to stay away from her boyfriend. Since she overheard Mirika's private confession, Saki insists that Naoya stay by her side. However, the boy misunderstands the situation and believes that she is simply feeling lonely. Though Saki embraces Naoya's misunderstanding at the moment, as it pushes Marika away. She even sits on his lap throughout all the classes despite the embarrassment, feeling glad to have him all to herself. They really giving all the single peeps a painful reality check. Afterwards, Saki and Naoya try to escape Marika's presence, finding themselves in a small room to change for their PE class. 
Meanwhile, Nagisa devises a plan to divert Marika's attention by sending her an anonymous message threatening to expose her identity at school. This leads to Marika getting off Saki and Naoya's trail to follow Nagisa to the rooftop, albeit finding nothing there. She has been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. Later, Nagisa confesses to feeling a tad bit jealous that Saki and Naoya had the opportunity to spend the entire day together. However, she doesn't want to force Naoya to embrace her as it might be hurtful to Saki. Though confident in being the first girlfriend, Saki gives Nagisa her blessings and heads off to leave them alone for some private time. However, Naoya insists that she stays and watches them to be at ease. Surprisingly, Saki finds herself becoming excited while observing Naoya and Nagisa embrace warmly. While she gets worried about having a twisted fetish for NTR, Nagisa collapses on the floor due to being excited. Seeing Naoya approach the fallen maiden, Saki wonders if she is about to get NT red for real and decides to intervene by punching the ever-living crap out of the boy. At what point is Bro going to file a case though? As Mirika's offensive starts getting more aggressive with each passing day, even the clueless Naoya begins to suspect that she may have developed a crush on him due to their continued conversations. Though, they convince him that Marika is just in heat. Being the gullible and trusting idiot that he is, the boy assumes that this phenomenon affects all women, offering himself to Saki and Nagisa in case they encounter similar situations. Fully convinced that he was mistaken, Naoya feels remorseful for thinking that Marika had a crush on him and apologizes to her, embarrassing the poor girl in class. Red hot as a tomato, Marika grabs Naoya's hand and drags him away for a private conversation. Marika drags Naoya to the school roof, getting followed by Saki. Nagisa also looks on from a distance, while the MeTuber questions why Naoya would think that she has a crush on him. The boy remarks that he mistakenly thought Mirika was into him because her face is red around him all the time, even though it was just because she is in heat. Of course, this angers Mirika, unable to believe that Naoya is stupid enough for believing such an obvious lie. After deflecting the situation, Mirika asks the boy what he would have done if she actually had feelings for him. Naoya explains that he would get flustered, but would still have to reject her in order to keep Saki and Nagisa happy. Refusing to give up, Mirika comes up with a plan to make Naoya fall for her. She charges into his class, stubbornly announcing her love for him in front of everyone. Social anxiety is scared of her. Marika then takes Naoya away to the gym storage room. Saki and Nagisa run after her, inquiring what she intends on doing, revealing that she plans to continuously hit on Naoya. Marika hopes to eventually make him fall in love with her. However, despite her persistence, Naoya continues to reject her. This overwhelms Marika, causing her to snap and kiss him before quickly running off, hoping that this makes the boy think of her. Girl got that sexual harizment! Unbeknownst to them, Saki's friend, Shino, overhears Marika talking about Naoya's relationship with Saki and Nagisa from outside the storeroom, getting worried that the boy is two-timing her friend. Later, Saki and Nagisa feel downhearted about Marika kissing Naoya, even though he hasn't done it with them yet. Though after pondering on it, Saki dismisses it as not being a genuine kiss, since it was a surprise without any emotional connection. She announces that unlike Naoya's kiss with Marika, their first true kiss will be genuine and memorable. Nagisa proclaims the same thing, going as far as to say that they will do even more after kissing. What do you mean by that? Hearing about how much heartache he has caused Saki and Nagisa, Naoya bows into the ground so hard that his head bleeds. He apologizes for troubling the girls so much, reiterating his love for them. Promising to love Saki and Nagisa so much that it makes Marika give up, Naoya suggests that they start fresh and go on a date. Readily seizing the opportunity, Saki demands that they go to a hot spring. In class, Saki's friend, Shino, tries to ask Naoya if she can talk with him later. However, before the boy can answer, Saki drags him away to shop for their hot springs trip. Later, Naoya, Saki, and Nagisa go out shopping together, though the three are unaware of Marika following them. Afterwards, Nagisa contemplates whether she should try to kiss Naoya first during their trip. Saki is also lamenting the same thing and ends up confessing everything to her. Caught each other in 4K. Witnessing the stress Marika's previous kiss has caused Saki, Nagisa decides to support her and gives the girl her blessings to kiss Naoya first she decides to support her friend instead. Meanwhile, Mirika continues to stalk the trio and finds out about their hot springs vacation. Determined to find out if Naoya is two-timing her friend, Shino asks Saki about the location of their trip, planning to intercept the boy there. She gotta change her name to Snoopy at this point. Arriving in Hakone, Naoya suggests that they do everything there that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. He starts with holding both Saki and Nagisa's hands simultaneously, ignoring any and all weird looks they get. Seeing Naoya take charge like this, Saki hopes that they are able to engage in sexual activities during the trip as well. Sheesh. Keep it in your pants, girl. Soon, the trio arrives at their inn, discovering that both Marika and Shino are already there. 
Shino claims to have evidence that Naoya is cheating on Saki with Nagisa, making the latter instantly claim that she coincidentally came there with Marika. The MeTuber is reluctant to go along with the plan, but Nagisa threatening to expose her secret Marika identity makes her agree to it. Later Nagisa messages Naoya, telling him to enjoy his trip with Saki while she keeps an eye on the troublemaking MeTuber. However, the boy refuses to exclude the self-sacrificing Nagisa from their date. He sneaks through the rooftop to arrive at Nagisa and Mirika's room, finding them about to take a bath. Regardless, Naoya insists that Nagisa join him and Saki for their date. Having already made up her mind to support Saki during this trip, Nagisa declines the invitation and locks herself inside the inn. However, this inadvertently leaves the boy alone with Marika in the bath, who vows to seduce him this time around. Finds himself at the receiving end of her seductive intentions. Taken aback that her memorable first kiss only surprised Naoya and didn't make him obsess over her, Marika falls to the ground. She decides to change her strategy and asks Naoya to have a normal conversation with her. Worried about Nagisa, the boy reluctantly gives her five minutes. Talking about what they do in their free time, Naoya reveals that he watches Marika's videos since they are fun, unbothered by her causing him so much trouble. He's a keeper, ladies. Feeling her heart skip a bit, Mirika expresses her delight at getting to talk to Naoya. Suddenly, her towel accidentally slips off. Caught off guard, Naoya quickly escapes to go talk to Nagisa. However, he ends up falling into the women's hot spring. There, Naoya meets an almost naked Shino who is about to take a bath. Overcoming her initial embarrassment, she confronts the boy and demands to know if he is cheating on Saki, worried that her friend is stupid enough to be too timed if begged enough for it. Girl really Sherlocked it word for word, bar for bar. Meanwhile, Saki meets up with Nagisa, wanting to keep their relationship secret. Naoya tries to escape but gets caught by Shino. A mishap with Shino leads to her naked and on top of the boy, right as Saki and Nagisa walk in. These anime accidents getting a little too wild now. Saki is devastated, while Nagisa takes a compromising photo to use as leverage against Shino later. The latter runs off in embarrassment, and Saki punches Naoya for his actions. Anyways, Nagisa still refuses to join the date, wanting the other two to have some alone time. Right when Naoya insists on including Nagisa despite her objections, other guests at the hotel arrive there, resulting in Saki throwing Naoya out of the women's bath. Later, the two girls bathe together where Saki reassures Nagisa that she doesn't have to constantly put herself aside in their relationship. The latter remarks that she always felt a bit sad for herself, revealing her embarrassing history of how she has always had to work harder than everyone to be barely considered average in all walks of life. This self-pity continued until the love of her life appeared before her at the summer entrance exams. Nagisa opens up about the moment she first laid eyes on Naoya, seeing him confessing his love to Saki over and over, despite getting rejected every time. Becoming completely infatuated with him, she vows to live her life with his unrelenting tenacity. Just like that, Nagisa gets into the school, hoping that she can get to talk to Naoya. However, he already seems to be in a relationship, though this doesn't deter Nagisa from chasing after him. After all, Naoya's persistence, even in the face of hopeless odds, is what she fell in love with. And so, Nagisa spends the next few months becoming the ideal partner for Naoya, the person who saved her. She's a little confused, but she's got the spirit. Unbeknownst to Nagisa, Naoya overhears everything. Afterwards, the boy appears before Nagisa and reveals that he heard everything she said about him, encouraging her to stop holding back. Feeling embarrassed that Naoya found out everything, Nagisa hastily flees from the scene. In the meantime, Shino coincidentally crosses paths with Marika. Right then they see Nagisa, Naoya, and Saki rush past them and join in the chase. Running around the entire town, Nagisa insists that she must remain second to Saki, fearing that their entire relationship would collapse otherwise. Saki, Mirika, and Shino all eventually fall behind due to exhaustion, leaving Nagisa and Naoya to continue without them. During the chase, the girl expresses her desire to be number one to Naoya, but doesn't want that to come at the expense of their current relationship. What kind of NTR even is this anymore? Eventually, Naoya catches up to Nagisa and reassures her that he thinks of both girls as being number one in their relationship. He gives the girl a warm embrace, promising to never leave her alone or give up on her, vowing to solve all problems that arise in their relationship. The others eventually catch up as well, and Shino inquires about Nagisa's relationship with Naoya. Moved by the boy's words, Nagisa finally opens up. Giving Naoya a peck on the cheek, she confesses to Shino about dating him as well. Saki accepts this declaration, announcing that they are now rivals for the position of senior girlfriend. Casually telling Shino that they are in a two-timing relationship, Saki drags Naoya and Nagisa away from her and Mirika. Finally, the trio manages to enjoy their vacation together. Later, Shino invites the three to her house and criticizes Naoya for two-timing Saki. She also scolds the latter for accepting such an arrangement. However, she is taken aback when Naoya reveals his plan to inform Saki's mother about their relationship, having already messaged her about an important conversation. Of course, Saki furiously objects to this. After the trio leaves, Shino decides to find a way to stop Naoya's two-timing relationship. The girl can't see him being involved with multiple women, as she won't be able to give up her own hidden feelings for Naoya otherwise. Another one bites the dust, and another one gone. 
Soon after, Shino discovers that Marika also has a huge crush on Naoya, causing her to accuse him of three-timing despite his insistence that he is only two-timing. Shino stands in front of her evidence board about Naoya and all his girlfriends, remarking that he isn't allowed to fall in love with anyone other than Saki, as she won't be able to give up on him otherwise. Right then, she receives a call from Saki but doesn't want to talk to her, though the latter convinces the former to come over by lying about Naoya being buck-naked and sniffing Nagisa's panties. Afterwards, Shino arrives at their house and finds out that she has to tutor Nagisa for her exams. Since Naoya plans on spending all his hard-earned money to go on dates with Saki and Nagisa in the summer break, he doesn't want either of them to fail their exams, given that they will have to take summer classes if they do. Having spent all her time being the ideal girlfriend for Naoya, Nagisa has fallen way behind and can't catch up with the studies despite his assistance. Blood maxed out her stats in the wrong categories, so they call in Shino to teach her as she has the highest grades in their year. Learning that Saki and Nagisa have been living with Naoya for a month and a half, Shino refuses to tutor the girl, not wanting Saki to be two-timed. However, Naoya insists and deletes her naked photo from Nagisa's phone. Shino is shocked why he would remove his only leverage like that, getting told that he couldn't possibly threaten her like that. Because that's what heroes do. This makes Shino's heart skip a beat, and she reluctantly agrees to help Nagisa study. And so, everyone passes their exams. In exchange for her services, Shino demands to live with Naoya, Saki, and Nagisa in their house during the summer break to get the boy to stop two-timing, to which he agrees. Marika, who is eavesdropping, gets upset that Shino is being allowed to stay while she isn't and blocks the entrance to Naoya's house. To resolve the situation, Naoya contacts her little sister, Risa, who convinces her to come home. Might as well have called the Avengers, no? Earlier, Marika kidnapped Naoya to her house to introduce him to Risa, also a MeTuber. Since he had always wanted to have siblings, she was hoping that it would make him want to date her. Naoya, however, refuses to date Marika, despite finding Risa's shenanigans cute. Later, the girl reveals that she and Risa have moved in next door. Getting adjusted to her new living arrangement, Shino reveals that she and Saki became friends in the first year of middle school. Finally finding someone with smaller boobs than herself, Saki clings on to Shino, continuously pestering her despite the latter's superiority complex. Later, while alone in her room, Shino reminisces about how she met Naoya. Coming to know him as the boy with sincere eyes who confesses to Saki once a month, Shino helps find a birthday present for her friend. In the process, the two go around shopping, almost like a date. When Saki coincidentally arrives at a store they are in, Naoya and Shino even hide together in a dressing room so as to not worry her about the boy's infidelity. Excuses used to be believable, man. Showering Shino with compliments, Naoya later gifts her a purple ribbon, something she wears to this day. Having developed feelings for the boy during their time together, Shino instructs him not to talk to her from now on for Saki's sake. Present day, Shino finds Naoya sleeping alone in the living room and reaches in for a kiss, though Saki interrupts, forcing Shino to come up with a dumb excuse for why she is so close to him. Afterwards, Shino finishes showering and makes her way out of the bathroom. Suddenly, Naoya walks in on her naked. One thing leads to another and the two end up on top of each other, something that Saki witnesses as well. They can't fool me. I am familiar with their game. This time, she has a slight suspicion that Shino might have feelings for Naoya. At night, Nagisa, Saki, and Naoya throw a welcome party for Shino. Initially, Shino is irritated by the idea since she intends on wrecking their two-timing relationship. However, after tasting the food that Nagisa prepared, she realizes how much care was put into it. Though, Shino also notices that the meal lacks a nutritional balance and prepares vegetables for everyone. Okay, Karen, we get it. Moments later, Shino snaps on Nagisa after finding out that she fell in love with Naoya despite knowing he already had a girlfriend. This time, Nagisa stands her ground. Despite wanting to be friends with Shino, the girl proclaims that she doesn't have any intention of breaking up with Naoya, making the former swear to end their relationship. Shino tells Saki to get ahead of Nagisa and kiss Naoya during the fireworks at the upcoming summer festival, only to get shocked at the revelation that it will be their first kiss. She drags her to the living room to kiss Naoya, announcing that they will never do it if they just keep waiting for the right time. She spitting, everyone including Naoya and Nagisa get on board with the plan. However, Saki refuses to have her first kiss like this, confident that she can pull it off at the fireworks festival. Finally, the night of the fireworks arrives, and every girl dresses up for the occasion. Naoya hangs around with Saki and Nagisa for the festival, all the while Shino tries to keep the latter at a distance. Mirika attempts to throw herself in the mix as well, only to get rejected by Naoya time and time again. Have some self-respect, lady. Walking with Naoya behind Saki and Nagisa, Shino tells him to make this night special for her friend, though the two duos end up getting separated. As the clock ticks down for the fireworks to start, Naoya and Shino run around to look for the others. During this time, the boy also ends up helping a lost young girl reunite with her friends, all the while carrying Shino to the first aid station after she hurt her ankle. Running around to look for Saki, Naoya gets intercepted by Marika, begging him to give her some of his time. However, she is brought to tears when the boy reveals that he has stopped watching her videos, enough to make a grown man cry getting questioned. If it's because he hates her now, 
Naoya announces that his reason for doing it is to keep himself from falling for her, and heads off. Right then, the fireworks start, and Marika starts feeling better, as Naoya's reason means that he recognizes her love for him. Meanwhile, Saki and Nagisa split off to look for Naoya since the fireworks only last for half an hour, deciding to meet up at the nearby park in 20 minutes. As Saki is about to run, Nagisa announces that she has an idea. Running around, Naoya and Nagisa find each other, only to run into one of their classmates. They manage to hide their relationship for the time being, and run to the park where Saki is to meet them later. Earlier, Nagisa and Saki agreed that if the former ran into Naoya first, she would get to spend time with him to make some memories. And so, the two lovers hold hands and watch the fireworks together, ending up in an awkward embrace. Naoya apologizes to Nagisa for still having to hide their relationship from people, getting told that it's fine as long as they spend many more years together. Soon, Saki arrives, enraged that Naoya won't tell her what he was doing with Nagisa earlier. Regardless, she wants to do what she needs to for her first kiss and sits together with Naoya to enjoy the fireworks. When Saki smells the scents of several different women on her boyfriend, the mood is about to get ruined, but the latter convinces her that nothing major happened. W lying skills lil bro. Hand holding is the lewdest thing on the planet. Saki tries to set the mood in order to enjoy their first fireworks festival together, since they have started dating and leans in for a kiss, but Nagisa's strong scent makes it impossible for her to focus. Just like that, the festival ends, causing Saki to fall into a depressed state, though she eventually comes around when Naoya attempts to remedy the situation with store-bought sparklers. It's really that easy? Saki's acceptance makes the boy question how she feels about their current relationship, wanting to learn more about her. Playing around with the sparklers, Saki expresses that she still loves him, even while getting lonely sometimes, having no doubt that he is going to continue loving her as well. Bursting into tears, Naoya says that he is glad that Saki is the one he fell in love with and gives her a warm embrace. Suddenly she panics and calls the others to play with the sparklers. There, Shino finds out that Saki still hasn't kissed Naoya and is left questioning if she is really serious about her relationship. Meanwhile, Mirika makes a plan to abduct the boy on July 31st, jail speed run incoming. Almost getting caught by Naoya while looking at a picture of him, Shino questions why he didn't kiss Saki yesterday, getting told everything that happened after they separated. Hearing about what Naoya did with Nagisa, Shino gets emotional and runs to her room. She starts crying out how unfair things are, as Nagisa's presence in Naoya's life has made it impossible for her to move on from him. Later, an expensive package arrives at Naoya's house in Saki's name, giving them free gear and campsite coupons. Of course, this is all Marika's doing to put in motion her plan of abducting the boy. Soon the camping trip begins, and Shino continues to push Saki even harder towards Naoya. After a bit of teasing and groping, Saki sits down to have a heartfelt conversation with her friend and inquires about what's bothering her. Shino then asks Saki if she isn't really serious about Naoya, getting her question drowned out by a call. This is a sign from the universe to keep quiet, lady. Turns out, the setup for their camping trip has gone totally off the rails. Right then, Marika arrives there with her little sister Risa as their professional savior, revealing that she is the one who sent them everything in order to spend some time with Naoya. The group tries their hardest to reject Marika's advances, but they are lost in the wilderness without her camping expertise. After cooking some food for them, Mirika announces that Naoya is starting to like her, something that he is unable to deny. While he gets punched by Saki for it, Risa and Shino try to make sense of why everyone is so unbothered by the boy being a two-timing cheater. Mirika declares that she doesn't care about anything other than the fact that she loves Naoya, vowing to go on the offensive from now on. Soon, everyone falls asleep, having been drugged by the food they ate earlier. Nah, she definitely going to prison at this rate. With this, the operation, Romantic Camping with Naoya, commences. Trying to seduce Naoya at first, Mirika realizes that he started to notice her more after their casual conversation and sits down to talk with him. Still getting rejected, she handcuffs herself to the boy. As they fight for the key, Mirika pours her heart out to Naoya, making his heart flutter. Soon, the star-studded sky reveals that they are past midnight. The 1st of August arrives, a date that marks the girl's birthday. Revealing that she wanted to see this view with him for her birthday gift, Mirika resolves to live a life full of memories with Naoya, never giving up on him even if she's miserable. Need someone to love me like this? Hearing this, the boy gives her permission to do anything and everything she wants to do with him for the next five months. Resolved to accept Mirika's advances at her most serious, Naoya announces to reject her properly after that. As something this extreme is what she loves about him, Mirika accepts Naoya's challenge and promises to melt him into a puddle in the next five months. Greatest battle since John Cena fought The Rock at WrestleMania 28. The two celebrate her birthday together under the starry sky, after which Naoya runs off to look for the others, soon reaching them along with Mirika. Naoya fills in the others about his arrangement with Mirika, taking a few punches from Saki along the way. The group then enjoy their camping trip together and head back, leaving Shino wondering if she should go all out like Marika to get closure as well. Yup, let her cook, I say. Right off the bat, Marika manages to infuriate Saki and the others by planting a kiss on Naoya's cheek and claiming that anything's fine as long as it's not lewd. Being the overly honest dope that he is, 
Naoya can't go back on his promise to let Marika do whatever she wants for these five months he's given her to win him over. As if that wasn't bad enough, Mirika declares that she'll be sleeping in Naoya's room with him while living here. After an unsuccessful attempt from Saki to bash her brains in, Mirika gaslights her and Nagisa into allowing this sleeping arrangement. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, am I right? Naoya, infinitely twisted wisdom, decides that all the girls can take turns sleeping in his room to keep things even. Also so, he can train his resistance to girls other than Saki and Nagisa. My guy's reasoning keeps getting more and more paper thin. After a sudden game of rock-paper-scissors, Shino is decided as the first person to sleep with Naoya. That night, Naoya simultaneously crushes and restores Shino's self-esteem by refusing to look at her, but then almost breaking down and accepting her advances. What gym do I go to for this kind of training? Next up is Marika, the following night. After hearing he barely held himself back against Shino, she's actually concerned for her purity and goes in wearing a bare onesie to repel him. Unfortunately, her resolve crumbles faster than a cookie in milk and she ends up trying to entice Naoya with her cantaloupes. In the end, Naoya tells her to have more self-respect and tells her he doesn't not like her, perking her right back up. Well, that was easy. Come the next day, Nagisa realizes Naoya's been stretching himself thin recently and beats Saki to get her turn tonight. That night, she enters Naoya's room in a nurse cosplay, manhandles him into bed and forces him to relax for once. She even calls his work and gets him a day off before spending the night taking care of him. Best girl. Best girl. I refuse to hear otherwise. When Saki learns the next day that Nagisa sacrificed her night to take care of Naoya, she decides to support him too. Her approach is much more unconventional though. She shows up to his room that night with a bunch of lewd magazines she scavenged from a park and tells him to relieve himself with them. In order to prevent feeling lust for other women, Naoya ends up taking a picture of Saki instead, which sets her heart aflutter. At least until he takes her face and tapes it onto a body in the magazine. Even I know that's a terrible move. Naturally, Saki destroys him. A ridiculous incident in the morning involving Marika's lingerie ends up with Naoya being shown each of the girl's underwear to measure who excites him more. Luckily, Saki and Nagisa both come out above Marika at the same exact level while Shino accidentally matches them. God, I see what you've done for this man and all I ask is a fraction of what he's got. Later, Saki brings up the topic of going to the beach for a vacation. After working out their budget, Naoya agrees to go to Okinawa for a night. Saki wants to extend the trip by one night despite it being out of budget, so Shino lets them use her dad's beach villa instead. She's loaded too, to make things even more interesting. Saki resolves to finally have her first kiss with Naoya on this trip. Of course, this plan is hijacked instantly and becomes a competition between all of the girls for that same goal. What is this man doing right? While shopping for the trip, Naoya picks out swimsuits for his girlfriends, each complementing their figures. He also picks one out for Marika, but makes sure it's a super modest one. During the shopping trip, Marika manages to work out that Shino has a crush on Naoya as well. Using this information, she blackmails Shino into allying with her and getting her some alone time with Naoya at the beach. Not wanting Saki to learn about her feelings and be hurt, Shino reluctantly agrees. Of course, Mirika's offer to get her some free time with him doesn't hurt either. Call her Venom, because this is one hell of a symbiotic alliance. On the flight to Okinawa, Naoya's intense fear of flying shows itself and results in him glomping on to all the girls in a massive hug. Sigh. Just W after W even when he's dead scared. After reaching Shino's beach house, the group head out to the sea, and Naoya's treated to the reveal of the girls in the swimsuits he picked. While his girlfriends are overjoyed, Marika heads back with Shino to change upon, realizing he chose hers for its modesty. Girl really thought he was a freak there. With Mirika and Shino gone, Nagisa goes to get the food so her partners can have some alone time. Despite the intimate moment they share though, Saki's too shy to move in for a kiss and runs off instead. Later, Nagisa speaks to Naoya in private and convinces him to give his all to having his first kiss with Saki before the trip ends. Awed by her thoughtfulness and adorableness, Naoya grabs her in a bear hug. Can't blame him, she's too precious for this world. Unknown to them, Mirika overhears and vows not to let this happen. Later, Naoya very bluntly asks Saki to go somewhere private with him. Mirika uses her blackmail material to force Shino into intervening against her wishes. Seeing no way to stop them without looking suspicious, Shino jumps into the ocean and loses her top so Naoya will have to come catch it for her. Unfortunately, she gets a real leg cramp while faking one and knocks Naoya out with an uppercut. Someone recruit her to the UFC already. Afterwards, Mirika talks down to Shino and has her leave her alone with an unconscious and tied down Naoya in one of the villa's bedrooms. This screams criminal charges. Call the police Shino. As Mirika gets to groping the crap out of Naoya, Saki and Nagisa freak out after hearing her and scramble to find a key to the door. They better hurry cause she's wasting no time. Inside, Mirika starts peppering Naoya's cheek, neck, and even his chest with kisses in her quest to have him fall for her. Luckily for him, she's so embarrassed by her own actions that Naoya's impulses are diminished. Eventually, she admits that she can't stand the thought of him kissing someone else, something Shino can empathize with from outside the door. I smell a confession brewing, and it's gonna be spicy. Once Nagisa and Saki finally break in, ready to mutilate Mirika, the blonde has already escaped. 
Later at the beach, Shino watches Marika unflinchingly continuing to pursue Naoya and feels envious at her determination. Shortly afterwards, Naoya finds Shino standing at a cliff while clutching the ribbon he gave her years ago. As they speak, Shino's about to take the plunge and confess when a gust of wind blows in and carries her ribbon into the ocean. Without a second thought, she jumps after it. Didn't mean the plunge thing literally, but this works too. Naturally, Naoya jumps after her when a massive wave starts rolling in and saves her. Unfortunately, in doing so, he ends up dragging them both to an uninhabited island, a ways away from the main one. Deciding to make the most of it, Naoya has them gather supplies to spend the night here and make their way back in the morning since it's almost dark. While doing so, Shino gets closer and closer to letting her feelings out. Eventually, when she shows signs of getting a cold, Naoya has her undress and sit by him as he builds a fire for her. As he does this, they talk, and Shino gets pushed closer and closer to the edge, speaking to him about her feelings for a mystery man. Between his kind words and the reveal that he's hurt his hands in making her a fire, Shino can't take it anymore. Unable to hold her feelings, she pushes him to the ground and after a moment's pause, locks lips with him. Called it. What a freaking underdog story. After the kiss, Shino realizes what she's done and instantly tries to backpedal but fails to come up with any excuses. Luckily, she realizes that she should just confess now while she can. Yes, do it. I've got a 50 riding on this. Right as she's in the middle of her confession, Naoya points out she's naked, causing her to freak out and hide behind a tree. God damn it. Then, Naoya asks her if this was just another of her accidents like usual, already convinced. Shino agrees, her nerve lost. Double goddamn it. Stupid freaking anime trope. Oh, hang on now. At the last second, Shino charges through and tells Naoya it wasn't an accident. Right as she's about to tell him she's always liked him, she collapses with a cold. Triple freaking goddamn it. Back on the mainland, Saki and the others are freaking out looking for the two when they learn that the two were seen being washed away. Morning comes before long and Shino's condition has only gotten worse now with heat stroke on top of her cold. Seeing no other way to get her the help she needs, Naoya makes up his mind. He picks up Shino, loads her onto his shoulder, and with every last ounce of his strength, he rushes into the ocean and swims back to the mainland. He has the power of anime and boners on his side. Once they make it to the mainland, Naoya collapses from exhaustion. Moments later, Saki comes across them, having been scouring the shore all night. Embracing Naoya, she breaks down in tears of relief, and as Shino watches on, she locks lips with her boyfriend. Later, back at the beach house, Saki and Mirika get into a one-sided argument when the latter realizes what happened on the shore. After Naoya and his girlfriends leave the room, Mirika confronts Shino for not stopping the kiss, but ends up even more pissed when she learns of everything that happened on the island. Shino just tells her that she can't come between Saki and Naoya after seeing how much she cares for him. Later, Naoya and his girls come to invite Shino out for food when she makes a shocking announcement. She's going to be transferring to a different school and leaving here on the first flight home, all because she's done a lot of thinking and decided this is best. Unwilling to accept such flimsy reasoning, Saki gets into a row with her childhood friend, eventually bringing Shino to tears when Saki calls her her best friend. That's probably the guilt setting in. Still, W Saki. Later, Shino sits at the beach alone, silently weeping, as Marika of all people tries to talk her down from her decision. This only solidifies Shino's resolve though, and she moves to leave while drying her tears. Before Shino can leave, Marika stops her by insisting that she can't just turn away from these feelings now that she's accepted them. Her words force Shino to delete a cherished picture of Naoya to prove her determination. She even tries to throw away the ribbon he gave her, but she breaks down and isn't able to. Marika decides to stop being a douche for the moment and convinces Shino to stay true to her feelings the same way she is. I guess even the devil has a heart. Just then, Naoya and the others show up to stop her, having been messaged by Marika. Before she can flee, Naoya grabs her by the hand and talks her into being honest. He makes her remember how much Saki cares about her, and how none of them can move forward if she doesn't even tell them the truth, and leaves them like this. With some encouragement from Saki as well, Shino manages to confess her feelings, only for Naoya to regretfully reject her instantly. Conflicted between her love for her friend and boyfriend, Saki ends up embracing Shino and apologizing for being the cause of her pain all these years. The next morning, everyone's sitting in the villa awkwardly as Shino prepares to go home beforehand. Everyone except Mirika, that is. So the heart thing was just temporary then. As she's leaving, Saki tells Naoya to go comfort Shino. The two go to the beach for their conversation while Saki watches sneakily from behind a rock. Naoya offers up a heartfelt apology, which causes Shino to just smile and sit with him. She gives an equally heartfelt and complete confession this time, having wanted to do so in private. Right as it seems things have come to a close, Shino suddenly throws a curveball. She wants Naoya to go from two-timing Saki and Nagisa to three-timing them and her. That's a win, I think? Saki leaps out from her hiding place, but Shino assures her she only wants this with her blessing and will do her best to support their pre-existing relationship first. After that, Saki, Nagisa, and Naoya are all lost for words from the flight, to the bus ride, to the walk home. There, they're greeted at the door by Shino, who's baked some sweets for Naoya. 
Even Saki and Nagisa are taken aback by how perfectly cute she is. Shino's not stopping there, though. She insists on tutoring Naoya so he can have the best grades possible and make his girlfriends happy. After yet another lewd accident that gives Naoya a face full of lemons, Shino speaks to his girlfriends. She promises Saki to not take Naoya away from her and begs for Nagisa's forgiveness since she was always so hard on her for being the second woman. From there, it seems things are settled and they can peacefully move on together, at least until Saki remembers something odd she said back at the beach and learns that Shino kissed Naoya before she did. Between that and Nagisa being the only one who hasn't done it now, a whole new can of worms is opened up for the thruple, now fruple, to deal with. But with their earnestness and care for each other, they should be able to get through anything life throws at them, probably. How was the video? We hope it was good. If so, please check these videos. Also, please comment down your thoughts and your suggestions for future videos. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing now to show the support to our channel. We hope to see you soon with another video right in this channel. Have a nice day.